All right. Today we're gonna we're gonna trade. So I'm gonna start with a little introduction. Where's my phone? Okay. I'm gonna start with the uh, uh, with a quote that that says that you become what you think about. You become what you think about. You become what you think about. So this, is, this means that you are your thoughts, right? You are what you say you are. Whatever image you have in your mind about who you are, that's exactly who you are. So now I'm gonna bring the analogy into trading perspective. Trading, listen to this carefully because it's very important. Trading is a character amplifier. Trading is a character amplifier, right? Meaning that who you are in the physical world is who you are as a trader. If, if in reality you are greedy, you're going to be greedy in the trading world. If in reality, if you don't know how to take risks, you're gonna absolutely fail in this industry, for sure. In reality, if you have fear of, of things, you're gonna have fear um, in the trading world as well. So everything reflects, right, who you are in this realm and in the third dimensional realm, that's who you are in this second dimensional realm. So the advantage of this is that, is that trading is a two dimensional platform and you are us, me, you, anyone, any human being, we are a three dimensional beings performing in a two dimensional realm which is trading right so as a as, as a three dimensional beings we can see what's going to happen in the future so we are predicting the future from the third dimensional realm to the two dimensional realm right and trading or trading view is it is um the two dimensional axis is price times time price and time right that's what it is here so you become what you think about so how do we fix that how can we actually look this looks good let me see hold on okay that looks good that looks good Okay, not trading yet. Okay, how, let me repeat that again. We are a three-dimensional being performing in a two-dimensional platform, which is trading. And who we are in, a, in this realm and the third-dimensional realm, which is the physical realm, is who you are and how you make decisions and how you perceive things and how you analyze things in the second-dimensional well, now, right? This is this is the best part. This is the best part, right? So how how can we perform better, right? So we now we're gonna have to go higher than a three dimensional realm, right? We're gonna go to a structure that is called thinking, right? Which is, which are thoughts, basically. Remember, you are what, you are what you think about most of the time. The same, uh, the same goes, you, you are what you understand, basically, it's the same thing. You are what, what you understand. So the question is, 
how can you understand what's happening in the present moment, right? How can you know what's happening right now? You, you perceiving that the candle, for example, you perceiving that this candle is pushing up, that's it. But do you know why that's happening, right? So this is how we're gonna predict the future. We're gonna use, let's see. This is where you are right now, right? That's you, call it P, right? And this is the future here, future. I put present. And here we have the past, right? So we go from the past to the present and from the present to the future, right? Simple to understand. So the question is, how can we become aware of all this that whenever we are in the present moment, we can understand, we can actually understand what's gonna happen here, right? How can we do that? It's very simple, sharp. It's very simple. Let me see. This is the future, I mean, this is the present, right? And this is the past. Here, the past come, 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 and then it reaches the present, and the present start reaching the future. And then the future stop coming back, come, coming back, reaching the present. That way we can realize the past, right? So what I'm trying to say is that the same force of the past is going to be the same force of the present, right? So it's an infinite. That's, I think that's, that's, that's what it means. I'm not too sure. So the question is, how can we come, we can become aware of the present so we can understand the past and the future? Because we understand understand the past, we can understand the future. That's what's gonna happen. That's what happens if you're actually in the present moment. So how do we do that? We're gonna do that by, by thinking in a three dimensional structure, meaning that there's three things that we're gonna do to predict the future, to know what's in the present and to know what's in the future. Uh, the first one is to perceive, right? To observe what's happening in the market. What's happening, taking note of, okay, why, why did the price create this high? What happened here that led the market to the downside? Now that the market is here, what happened here that the market led to the upside? Now we have a spike here. What happened here that led this market to the downside? Right? Those are the questions you're gonna be asking yourself most of the time. And you're gonna start gathering, ga gathering data, right? So, now that you're learning how to perceive things and the more you start understanding why things happen here, whenever you are at the present moment, let me see, I put a smiley face because because it's beautiful being in the present, right? We are, whenever we are in the present moment, we can an analyze the data that we have in the present moment and based on history that we have trained our eyes to see, 
we can understand what's going to happen next. So information, and then you execute. Execute, right? That's it. That's the formula. Perceive, analyze, execute. Execution equals the future. That's it. We are time travelers. We can predict the future. That's right. Okay. I think that was that's enough for now. I think that's enough. I don't even know if I'm recording this shit. Okay, I am. Okay. Um, let's go back to trading because it seems that we talk too much. Okay, H four candle has closed below our quality quantum level, so we are seeing that we have a bullish rejection here. We have a closure, now we're bullish. So the market is ranging. There's no volume for me to enter just yet. Because for me to be able to look for a new setup, I need to see a bullish closure about this level here. And that would be like a clean buy to where? Well, we have this gap to be filled. So most likely here for the continuation and downside. But that's that's just the future, right? We don't wanna, we're not there yet. So we need to see what's happening now. Drop to the M15. Oh, I almost forgot, four hours. So since I got this bearish closure below, let me see, this bearish closure below, what I did is I got my finish from point A to point B. And the negative 27, 1.85675 is my level for a, a snipe entry. So I'm going to use the M15. On the M15, it's telling me that we are still on a bearish momentum. Strong, by the way. Strong bearish momentum. So this a pattern that is forming here looks nice. Right now we have a bullish here. Right. What I want to do here is for the market to come back to this level, it give me a clear indication that we indeed going to break that low and continue to the upside, right? Potentially to where we said. So what we need to see here is just see how the market's gonna reach, it's gonna react to this level here, right? We know that if the market actually break and retest, we're gonna be looking for a crazy buy to here or even here. So what we're going to do is be waiting for something to happen on the 15. So next one, GPP and CD, right? Same thing. Uh, we broke a strong level of support. Now I did the same thing to grab that target. And you can see that the market is breaking the level. That's good. Um, and the market did fill this gap. We have supply and demand here, if you want to call it, however you want to call it, look at a level right there. So what I'm trying to do here in the M15, right, this is what's happening. We see the market is creating a wave, right, low, and then create another wave here, and then another wave here, manipulation, and we have a false breakout and a retest. So I wanted the market to come back to this level and give me some sort of combination of candles, like a, like a bearish and bullish after tapping this level for me to buy, or I can just wait for a closure above here and buy at the closure to this high. You know, I like this, this one right here better because it's a lot of volume right there. There's no gap to be filled. So we're gonna see what happened here as well. So in the meantime, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. So we're looking for why. So we have the pound strong. This one is the trippy one. Not sure if I wanna take this one. All right. But I think I should take it because this actually follows my structure. So we have a closure above, the market close bearish, and the next one is green. So Let's see, something like that. And also the daily is a strong level. So this setup can either play on the M15 or, a, or H1 time frame. Now, 
on the H1 time frame, we have that this trend push the downside creating a wave. I would like for the one hour to come back to this level, show me a, a either a pattern for sales or a break and retest to go down. Yeah. So in the meantime, I'm gonna hold on into this trade. I mean, this setup for until we see something like magic. So in the meantime, we're gonna have this too, GBP and CD. No, GBP Australian and GBP, GBP and CD. Right, so let me see the volume of these candles to see how many pips. Okay, looks like I'm gonna do 20 pips on both of them. Here, I'm gonna play safe. Oh, this one, I don't need 20 pips, 50, even 10. Okay, I'm gonna do 15. my phone okay um i'm gonna pause this for now and come back whenever i see something happening um, in the meantime bye for now right or should i post a video for you for you to hear what's happening you know what i'm gonna do that i'm gonna record that session this session and wash it in the mornings as my so I can remind myself of what happened. Okay. Now, uh, my mission in life is to help you and everyone who needs my help, but I can never give you that for which you are not ready. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. Enjoy, guy. Enjoy. Let me call your attention to a great power which is under your control. A power which is greater than poverty, greater than the lack of education, greater than all of your fears and superstitions combined. It is the power to take possession of your own mind and direct it to whatever ends you may desire. Poverty, fear, illiteracy and superstition. The four horsemen which keep most people in bondage all the days of their lives. Faith is not something you get. Faith is something you already have. But you may be using it in reverse gear by believing in the circumstances and things you do not want, the things you fear. poverty and lack of education, you are simply directing your mind power to attract these undesirable circumstances. Because it is true that whatever your mind feeds upon, your mind attracts to you. Now you see why it is important that you recognize that all success begins with definiteness of purpose, with a clear picture in your mind of precisely what you want from life. Everyone comes to the earth plane blessed with the privilege of controlling his mind power and directing it to whatever ends he may choose. Your only limitations are those which you set up in your own mind or permit others to set up for you. Your faith is limited only by your own capacity to believe. guidance only it is not a power which will bring you what you want but a power that can guide you to go after what you want and get it
There is no such thing as something for nothing. Everything, including your personal success, has a price that must be paid. A negative mental attitude can bring you nothing but failure. Remember also, your mental attitude is the one and the only thing over which you have complete control. Success is something which has to be planned, and success is something which has to be earned in advance. True, there is such a thing as luck, but just remember that luck is something you can create for yourself if you know the rules and follow them, and the best definition of success which I know is this. Success is the knowledge with which to get whatever you want from life without violating the rights of others and by helping others to acquire it. Your only real limitation is the one you accept and set up in your own mind. The habit of going the extra mile definitely develops greater self-reliance and gives one more courage to move ahead without the fear of criticism from others. It helps you to master the destructive habit of procrastination, know what you want and believe that you can and will get it. Give expressions of gratitude many times daily for having received that which you want, even before you actually get physical possession of it. Possession starts first in the mind. There can be no application of applied faith without action. When overtaken by defeat, as you may be many times, remember that man's faith is tested many times before he is crowned with final victory. All right, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video here, the recording for now, and come back later whenever I'm either on a tray or something. Because it seems like this video is going to be way too long. And actually, I do not want to uh, record for a long period of time where nothing is happening. So I don't want to be wasting everybody's time. So I'm going to pause the recording for now and come back later in a little bit right now. All right, <clears throat> we are back. And it seems like we are about to place a tray on GPP AUD. Yep, GPP AUD is the one. So one of the things I was looking at is that we want to have a closure above. So that's confirmation for me. That tells me there's bullish um, that's coming in. So what I'm going to do is wait for the market to come back to this level, retest and execute. Let me open my trading. What price is that? Let me see. What price is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Six five. So I'm I'm gonna have a buy limit at seventy five. So I have a buy limit at seventy five. So let's see. Seventy five because I wanted to do a pullback because we still have this level for the market to come fill here. So I think 75 is a good price for me to enter, 75. Oh, hold on, hold on. What is the spread? GPUD, oh, it's two pips. So it has to be 85. 85. I'm gonna change that quick. It's two pips, so 85. 85, it's my buying order. Buying limit. It's about a bit trigger pretty soon. Spreads come on, fill me in. Oh my god, you're not gonna fill me in. Eighty five main reason because this price is sixty five and two pips. 75 85 is going to be my entry to for the spreads but it seems like these motherfuckers are expanding the spread now it went to two straight 2.5 you're going to be a bitch yeah what it went through why why do you not mark me in bitch come on and we are in market is in 
86. So our entries is 86. We have a nice setup. 85, 6. So I'm going to do 15 bits. That plus. So here's the idea behind this tray. I, don't, I do not want for M15 candle to close below here to trade here. Because if we do come back to stop loss, we're definitely going to melt. No doubt about that. Now, I am entering with momentum. The main reason being is that this is a, a false breakout, this pattern, right? So that validates my, my setup that is good. Now, I need to identify targets. You can go all the, all the way up here. That's one level. This is another level. This is another level here. I'm going to target the closest one here. 15, because I have no sure, I'm not sure how far it's going to go. So it's all the way to the high. OK. OK, first thing first, a one to one. So 15 pips. And then we decide what to do. Um, so 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 since this is going to play out pretty fast, I'm going to put a video music to motivate everybody, you know, because this may seem like magic whenever this plays out to the T. You know. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do and enjoy. And accept your defeat as nothing more than a challenge to keep on trying. I can give you a fine example of how nature forces man to go the extra mile in order that he may produce the food with which to exist. The farmer, for example, must follow the habit of clearing the ground, fencing it, plowing it, and planting the seed at the right season of the year, all of which he must do in advance without compensation of any kind. If he does his part of the work properly, he then hands the job over to nature, sits down and waits for her to do her part, and within a brief period, nature yields back to him the seed he planted, plus perhaps an increase of a hundred times that amount to compensate him for having gone the extra mile. Thus, we see that the law of increasing returns comes to the aid of the man who goes the extra mile. I say this is your greatest asset with which you may tap and draw upon the supreme power which created you and runs this entire universe. The name of this principle is applied faith. And I want you to remember it. it is not something I am bringing to you, but it is something you already possess, although you may not have made use of it in the past. Applied faith is the mental attitude wherein you may clear your mind of all fears and doubts and direct it to the attainment of whatever you desire in life. Applied faith is a mental attitude we must cultivate and maintain before we can take complete possession of our minds. We are now, this very moment, standing in front of the gateway which can be opened only with the great master key to success. Applied faith. Most people make a negative application of their great power of faith 
that by thinking about and believing in poverty, ill health, fear, failure, and defeat, when it would be so easy for them just to change their thinking over to the circumstances and things they desire. How many times the average person must fail before he quits? Fails because of the lack of capacity for belief. How many times can you meet with defeat before you give up and quit? Belief is truly a magic word because it is the beginning of all success. It is the very foundation of civilization. It is the one quality you must develop before you can make use of the great master key to success. To be successful, you must become a person with a great capacity for belief. And the place to start believing is with yourself. You should begin by recognizing that you were born with the privilege of complete control over your own mind. You can take full possession of your mind and make it yield you whatever you demand in life. If your life is not what you want it to be, you can change it. As a matter of fact, you can do anything within reason that you desire to do if you embrace the principle of applied faith and keep it directed to the attainment of the things you want and off the things you do not want. So you can read the stars. Are they always right? Usually. Some nights it can be difficult to interpret them. There are five crucial steps involved in learning how to develop into the kind of self-disciplined achiever who never quits and never loses sight of his or her goal. The first step is to rekindle and refuel your vision and purpose every single day. Remind yourself daily of the rewards and benefits that await you when you successfully realize your goal. The emotion you draw from these constant reminders of why you're working so hard and giving up so many things will sustain your powers of persistence and perseverance. The second step is to firmly anchor the following attitude deep within your heart and mind. I can achieve anything I set my mind to. Nothing is impossible for me to achieve if I want it badly enough and am willing to pay the price for it. No matter how much hard work it takes, no matter how long it takes, no matter how difficult it is, I can and will achieve my goal. Step 3. Realize that obstacles are going to arise and setbacks are going to occur. Keep in mind that these difficulties are really opportunities to learn. Every obstacle that you overcome, every setback you bounce back from, strengthens your character and makes you smarter and stronger. Whatever you do, don't try to hide from or ignore problems. They never go away by themselves. Meeting challenges squarely and solving problems creatively is at the heart of self-discipline and at the heart of achievement. Those things that hurt instruct. When your progress seems blocked, it means that it's time to increase your knowledge and look for creative solutions. This is the fourth step in developing persistence and perseverance. You may be doing the wrong things for the right reasons, and now is the time to find out. Start experimenting with taking different paths to your destination. But whatever you do, don't quit. Most people quit when things don't work out as they planned or when they realize how much hard work they're going to have to do. 
Remember, a failure is someone who has not learned from his mistakes. Step 5. Turn your work into fun. Make what you have to do into something you want to do. Working towards a lifelong goal shouldn't feel like a sacrifice because that goal is what you want more than anything in the world. Your long road to success will turn into an exciting journey of knowledge, discovery, challenge, and reward. The real problem arises when a major setback occurs, especially if it's unforeseen. A seemingly insurmountable obstacle is often enough to make even the most determined achiever decide that the fight simply isn't worth it. Setbacks make people give up just at the point when they should not. How can you deal successfully with setbacks? How can you learn not to feel like a failure when it suddenly seems that all of your hard work may have been for nothing? There are five ways you can turn every setback you encounter into a learning experience. First, never try to ignore a problem or handicap. Deal with your problems directly. Don't avoid them or try to hide from them. When you have a problem, Study it from all angles and try to determine the best way to proceed. Which brings us to our second point. Don't blame other people for your setbacks and don't chalk it up to bad luck. You make your own luck in this life and you have to solve your own problems. Learn to tackle them head on, being as realistic as possible and as level-headed as possible. Third, Continually strive to strengthen your qualities of self-discipline. Setbacks often occur because of weaknesses in certain areas. Try to turn those weaknesses into strengths. Be your own severest critic, but not your own worst enemy. Don't tell yourself, I failed. Tell yourself, I slipped, but I'm going to pick myself up and go on. Fourth, in almost every setback, there's a seed of opportunity, a silver lining, if you will. Find it and use it. You may find yourself taking a slightly different path to achieving your goal than you first imagined, but you'll get there just the same. Take the new path and see where it leads you. Following this philosophy helps take the emotional sting out of setbacks and is a good antidote for discouragement. And it's a healthier way to react to a bad situation than deciding to give up. Fifth, always remember that no matter how difficult a problem is, or how insurmountable it seems, there's always a solution. A problem is only really a problem if you think you can't solve it. If you take the attitude that every problem has a solution and you approach your problem with an open and creative mind, you'll find that solution. The key to reaching any goal is to develop the strength of character that makes you refuse to give up no matter how bad things look. The most amazing thing about persistence and perseverance is that they make it almost impossible for you not to succeed in your endeavors. In the years to come, you'll find yourself learning from trial and error, from accomplishments, from setbacks, from disappointments, from rewards, from the feeling of satisfaction you get when a job has been well done. The more you achieve, the more you'll learn one of the greatest secrets of achievement. Success breeds success. Every small step you take on the road to your goal will make it easier to take the next step. And once you've achieved your goal, you'll probably find that there's another goal you want to achieve. Along the way, you'll delight in the process of watching yourself in action, making corrections in your methods and strategies as you strive toward your ultimate goal and the hundreds of smaller goals you will successfully reach on the way. You uncovered the master key to your highest potential, self-discipline. We define self-discipline as the ability to work systematically and progressively toward a goal. to become positively obsessed with that goal and to let that obsession lead you to accomplishment. There is no other way to be successful 
except through hard work. The words pay for shouldn't bother you. All accomplishments come with a price tag, just like something you might want to buy. You should also be willing to make sacrifices in order to reach your goal. You may have to give up time, recreational activities, other priorities in your life. But it won't be difficult to do, because reaching your goal will become a more important source of pleasure. Self-disciplined achievers have a strong sense of purpose. They have a cause or direction to which they have chosen to dedicate their lives. This cause gives them meaning in their lives and a reason to exist. Those possessing an iron will dwell on the fulfillment of their vision rather than on fear and failure. They have a positive attitude toward themselves and their goal and refuse to let setbacks get them down. The self-disciplined achiever has a deep-rooted belief in his or her ability to achieve. They know that a goal can never successfully be reached in a haphazard way. They understand that they must map out a blueprint for success if they are ever to realize their highest ambitions. People who achieve their goals do so through persistence and perseverance. They are stubborn in their efforts to achieve, and they never give up. Self-disciplined achievers have a mature attitude toward pleasure. Rather than seeking any diversion that will temporarily make them feel better, they take the most pleasure in doing the work that will help them achieve their goal. Truly self-disciplined people are not bored, unhappy, or suffering from any kind of deprivation. In fact, they have learned to give themselves the true joy that comes from pursuing and achieving their most cherished goals and dreams. Self-discipline is your ability to systematically and progressively work towards a goal until you have reached it. It's your ability to become positively obsessed, single-minded, and efficient, to strive without giving up to work consistently day after day, week after week, and year after year until your purpose is fulfilled. It's incredible that the light from those stars has taken millions of years to get here. How many lifetimes must it have taken for that light to reach the Earth? More than we can imagine, but the Earth is only the start of its great journey. You make and unmake yourself. You stand and fall by what you are. The secret of life is to find the divine center within oneself. Finding the divine center within his own heart, he will be pure and calm and strong and wise. No doubt shall shake his trust. The fires of remorse cannot scorch him. nor can the storms of regret devastate his dwelling place. The present is his. Only in the immortal present does he live. Under control, your emotions can make you healthier and happier and improve the lives of people around you. When your emotions control your actions, it affects not only yourself, but the people around you. By a better understanding of the emotional patterns of everyday life, and by knowing how you respond to various stimuli, you can develop better control by eliminating the stimulus, or by modifying the stimulus, or by modifying the response, you can control the fire of your emotions. Sometimes we expect great things, but things can't always work out the way we expect. And when we're severely disappointed, we become emotionally upset. It's one thing to set high goals for yourself. It's quite another to be emotionally upset each time you miss your goal. If your emotions are in balance, you don't withdraw, stifle your emotions. You don't 
go off in a daydream. No, you channel your emotional energy into a direct attack on your problem. Life is more than rest, it is peace. More than work, it is duty. More than labor, it is love. More than enjoyment, it is blessedness. More than acquiring money and position and reputation, it is knowledge, purpose, strong and high resolve. All things are man's and he chooses that which he will have. All problems vanish when pure goodness is reached. Therefore, the good man is called the slayer of illusions. What would you say of a man who wanted to possess a mansion in which to dwell peacefully, purchased the site, and then knelt down and asked God to build the house for him? Would you not say that such a man was foolish? And as it is in the building of a material house, even so it is in the building of a spiritual mansion. Brick by brick, pure thought upon pure thought, good deed upon good deed. Not by caprice, nor gift, nor favor does a man obtain the spiritual realities, but by diligence, watchfulness, energy, and effort. The slave to self loves his chains and will not have one of them broken. He will remain in bondage to passion, sorrow, suffering. To conquer one's self is the only freedom. The land of perfect freedom lies through the gate of knowledge. The spiritual heart of a man is the heart of the universe. And finding that heart, man finds the strength to accomplish all things. He finds there also the wisdom to see things as they are. Not until a man falls back upon the truth within himself does he find rest and satisfaction. Now is the reality in which time is contained. It is more and greater than time. It is an ever-present reality. It may truly be said that past and future do not exist except as negative shadows. And to live in them, that is, in the regretful and selfish contemplation of them, is to miss the reality in life. Man has all power now. But not knowing this, he says, I will be perfect next year, or in so many years, or in so many lives. Say to yourself, I will live in my ideal now. I will manifest my ideal now. I will be my ideal now. And all that tempts me away from my ideal, I will not listen to. I will listen only to the voice of my ideal. A foot and light-hearted I take to the open road. Henceforth I ask no good fortune, I myself am good fortune. A man should be superior to his possessions, his body, his circumstances and surroundings, and the opinions of others, and their attitude towards him. He who regards himself as the outcome and the tool of circumstances, 
will weakly fluctuate with every change in his outward condition. That which is real cannot be destroyed, but only that which is unreal. When a man finds that within him which is real, which is constant, abiding, changeless and eternal, he enters into that reality and becomes meek. When other men fall, he stands. No enemy can possibly overcome or confound him. He needs no other protection than that of his own integrity. The force exists, and it has a scientific basis. But what does that power consist of? If we can define and isolate such a force, how can you or I tap into it? Through vision, commitment, patience, and creative application of knowledge and skill, you can see your goal through to the end. But the ultimate key to your success is persistence and perseverance. You'll find out how to turn problems and setbacks, even agonizing situations, into positive learning experiences that will actually bring you closer to the realization of your goal. And you'll understand the value of never giving up, no matter how tough the journey gets or how endless it seems. Persistence means never giving up. Perseverance means persisting in spite of hardships, opposition, and setbacks. Self-discipline is the power to say, this is what I really want in life, and this is how I'm going to get it. And if I have to give up some other things, I will, because it's worth it in the long run. To be self-disciplined, you must learn to develop the kind of obsession that glows like a beacon in a storm. You must learn to watch that light and steer your course towards it no matter what gets in your way or how long it takes. Like a sailor, you must learn to use the skill that will point you in the right direction. And you must keep on using all your knowledge, skill and energy to stay on course until you have reached your destination. With a steady, sustained effort that never falters, never crumbles, and never gets lost in unimportant details, you can be anything you want. Success consists of self-discipline, and self-discipline consists of doing whatever you have to do for as long as you have to do it to get where you want to be. If you truly want to seek your fortune, you must develop the inner strength to relentlessly pursue your vision day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, until it becomes a reality. And it will become a reality. Just think, how long did it take you to learn how to walk? Or how many weeks and months did you struggle to stand upright? How many bruises did you get from falling down? And how many times did you pick yourself up and try again? You learned to walk because as a toddler, you became obsessed with learning to walk. You were determined to learn, no matter how hard it was at first or how long it was going to take. Every step you took was a small victory. And every time you fell down, it was just an excuse to start all over. Children are naturally self-disciplined because children believe that everything is possible. Children don't say, I can't do it. Children say, I want to do it. When you want something badly enough and when you believe in it strongly enough, self-discipline will get it for you. Self-discipline is the most powerful tool you own for bridging the gap between wishful thinking and real fulfillment. You can have those good things by developing the self-discipline to achieve them.
Einstein said, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. The more I realize I don't know, the more I want to learn. If you have the self-discipline to see your efforts through, you can learn anything at any age. Whatever you have to learn, no matter how abstract or detailed the information, if it's necessary for your vision, then you can embody that information with your vision. Then it becomes something real and vital. You can put a handle on it. You have a reference for it. Learning is a lot easier if you have a specific reason to learn. Once you recognize that you have a need to learn, you've taken the first step toward achieving your goal. Creativity is the byproduct of a disciplined, well-informed mind. A mind that is using its storehouse of knowledge to solve problems and achieve goals. The more you learn, the more creative you can become. The belief in yourself as someone who is capable of learning is 90% of the learning hurdle. The other 10% is single-minded application mixed with ability. Much of your own belief in yourself as someone who is capable of learning complex material may have been educated right out of you in school. Take math, for example. Many people have learning blocks when it comes to math. They feel that they just don't have the aptitude to learn complex mathematical concepts. What most of these people lack is not the aptitude for math, but the application of self-discipline. Math requires progressive learning. You have to master one concept before you can go on to the next. If you miss a few steps in between, then it's really easy to get lost. And once you get lost, it's nearly impossible to catch up. To stay on top in math requires a daily effort of study. Most people who enter math think that they can get by with a minimum of effort. Most of these people are intelligent. They can get by in most other courses by just coasting. They think they can do the same thing in math. But soon they get behind and can't catch up and usually do poorly in the course. After such an experience, they label themselves as poor in math. They carry this label with them throughout their lives. Actually, they probably had and have the aptitude, but not the attitude. Their life's potential was stunted by a false assumption. Breaking the cycle of a negative attitude may not be easy, but once you do, you'll be far less inclined to get back into the cycle. That's why small steps and small accomplishments are so important in pursuing a macro goal. Once you have successfully learned a subject or skill, it bolsters your confidence in your ability to learn other skills. Once you've proven to yourself that a negative concept you had was wrong, you begin to realize that all of your negative concepts may be wrong. What you couldn't do in the past, you can now do. You can do it because finally you believe you can do it. Your past, in which you may have been labeled or labeled yourself as a non-learner, is precisely that, your past. It is not your present. It has little relation to what you are capable of accomplishing now. What has happened to many of us is that we have been conditioned into a negative feedback loop where learning is concerned. The step-by-step -step accumulation of new skills is the way to break this loop and replace it with a much more positive cycle. Most of us, at the time we are exposed to our greatest concentration of education, haven't developed the necessary self-discipline skills to be able to take advantage of it. All requires seasoning, the accumulation of knowledge over time, the perseverance to stick with a task over a long period of time, sometimes decades, the ability to find pleasure in the accomplishment of steps toward a goal, rather than seeking the instantly gratifying quick fix. All these are the hallmarks of the self-discipline.
What do you want that you're willing to pay the price for? What means so much to you that you'll spend weeks, months, or years pursuing it? Start thinking about your most cherished dream, because with the power of self-discipline, you're finally going to be able to achieve it. You'll learn how to gain the knowledge and skills that will set you on the path to success. And you'll learn to develop the kind of positive strength it takes to stay on that path until you have reached the very end. Once you get a taste of how intoxicating, of how free self-discipline feels, you'll be hooked on it for life. Behind every great achiever, there's another achiever. It may be someone close to home, a parent, teacher, or friend. It may be someone who's currently famous, or it may be a historical or mythological figure. When you get your shot of motivation, you become enthusiastic and energetic. When the shot wears off, you get sluggish and lethargic. The truth is, to be truly effective in the long term, motivation must come from within. I'd like to point out that acquiring self-discipline is a never-ending process. There won't come a day when you wake up in the morning and say, yes, I'm finally self-disciplined now. There's nothing more I need to do to develop strength of character and determination of will. Self-discipline requires a lifetime of commitment. This doesn't mean you won't develop the habits of self-discipline in a relatively short period of time. It simply means that you must always be vigilant about how you are approaching your goals and what your purpose in life really is. It's all too easy to get sidetracked in something that feels comfortable but is not what you really set out to achieve. Every small victory will become a cause for celebration and a chance to renew your faith in your own ability to achieve whatever it is you want in life. And as you achieve it, you will find yourself becoming the kind of person you've always admired. The kind of person who could pursue a goal so single-mindedly, so stubbornly, and so patiently that he or she could not help but achieve it. It would be nice if we were all born with the patience, drive, and skill it takes to achieve any long-range goal or complete any long-term project, but we're not. Self-discipline is a learned behavior. What do you value above all else? What would you like to be remembered for? One other myth about the acquisition of knowledge has it that you can get too old to learn. This bit of fallacious thinking has been handed down in the aphorism that you can't teach old dogs new tricks. It's worth laying to rest. To keep young, one must keep growing. This world today is tough. I quit school when I was in the 10th grade. My mother and father left me standing on a street corner. And so it was up to me to make it. And so I began working 90 hours a week. My home was the back of an old car. And I worked my 90 hours a week. Took my baths in a filling station restroom. And I washed my clothes, my private clothes, in the sink. And once in a while, when I was really hungry, I would go to the grocery store and snitch an apple or an orange. And I'm convinced that the owner of the grocery store knew what I was doing because it was about a half a block away from where I worked and he knew me. Now I've said before that 
good things nor bad things last forever. And that's true. And I began to learn different things. I knew in my soul that if I had nothing to offer, I was as far as I was going to go. And after I'd worked 90 hours a week for a long time, I went into the service. In the service, I taught myself to read and write, and I continued to read. And in several months, I was reading two and three books at a time, and I knew where I was in every single one of them. A person's mind is incredible. Your mind is as incredible. Regardless of what's happening in the world today, you have opportunity, and don't you believe for one single minute what they say in the media? Because if you aren't getting ahead and you need to get ahead, position yourself to learn. You are the backbone of this world. Without you. This world is nothing. Nothing. You are the backbone of this world. We need you. We need your minds. We need your hearts. We need your lives. We need your loves. We need you to care, and I, and I know that you do care. Oh, I see young people stepping on the flag and throwing rocks, rioting. That's frustration. Frustration. It's frustration with the establishment, and I understand it. But that's not you. Don't let that be you. Rise above it. You're better than that. Rise above it. As I went on and I got out of the service, I had begun to write. I've continued on through my life with that, and you can do the same thing. You don't have to have a doctorate or a PhD, PhD or a master's degree. What you have to have is determination. You have to have an inner will to get things done. You have to have a desire, and I know the desire is there. Because, as I said before, without your brains, without your ambition. Without your drive, this world will be nothing. Nothing, because old people like me die off. I have been successful. I've had financial problems. Everyone has those. But you can't stop. You can't quit. You can't say I'm a failure. You're not a failure. You're not. You're a wonderful, strong. Intelligent youngster, take advantage of that. Trust in yourself and step forward. Put one foot in front of another. So you can do it. I did it. You can do it. And as old as I am, I would pick up my cane. And defend you to my last breath, because I love you. Just remember, never quit, never quit.
Promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. To talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet. To make all your friends feel that there is something worthwhile in them. To look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true. To think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. To wear a cheerful expression at all time and give a smile to every living creature you meet. To give so much time to improving yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of yourself and to proclaim this fact to the world, not in loud word, but in great deeds. To live in the faith that the whole world is on your side, so long as you are true to the best that is in you. Remember that you lose what you condemn. You are here to use your power or authority wisely. Nature insists on a balance. If all your time is devoted to external things and possessions, you will find yourself hungry for peace of mind, harmony, love, joy, or perfect health. You will find you cannot buy anything that is real. The mind is not the instrument of a metaphysical superhuman soul. Mind is soul. Mind is being. Mind is man. Man can find himself. He can see himself as he is. When he is prepared to turn from the illusory and self-created world of hypothesis in which he wanders and to stand face to face with actuality, then will be known himself as he is. Moreover, he can picture himself as he would wish to be and can create within him the new thinker, the new man, for every moment is the time of choice and every hour is destiny. Knowledge of the spiritual power is the means to the royal road to riches of all kinds, whether your desire is spiritual, mental, or material. The student of the laws of mind or the student of the spiritual principle believes and knows absolutely that regardless of the economic situation, stock market fluctuation, depression, strikes, war, other conditions or circumstances, he will always be amply supplied regardless of what form money may take. The reason for this is he abides in the consciousness of wealth. Right. Um, we already hit tips and tips. Right. So what I'm going to do right now is, is to move my stop loss to break even. So I do not want to lose this trade anymore. Why is that one? The spread is two pips still. What a bitch. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my stop loss break even. So 86.0. What was it? 86.086. Um, and six, so I'm gonna do night five, one tip above. Okay, this trace cover now. 
what's the probability that the market is going to continue to the downside here and stop me on break even? That's a good question. Because we do have, okay, we don't need this anymore. We have this level here. Got the market going to reach, and we also have this level. So this is a very strong zone for the market to do whatever the fuck I want. So it, it can still come back all the way to here and continue to the upside. It's a possibility because there hasn't been no break of structure and retest. So I uh, only put my stop loss to break even. I'm actually going to go for a one or two. Okay, trusting this setup. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna set my target. Six, three, six, three, eighty-five. Okay, yeah. But I set my target already. So I got nothing to lose now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the video now and come back to either my step to get to get stepped out or for the market to actually respect these levels and continue to the upside. If that one's bearish, you know, of course, that's gonna be a problem. Main reason of that is because if you follow if you visualize this way, right? It has created what high at this level. So that could be like a false breakout and continue to the downside. That's one of the reasons we must have lost break even. But as long as we close, which seems like less likely above what price is this. 180, 1 1.86, 154, 55. We may not have enough momentum to continue the upside. <laughs> but it's because of the way that it's crossing, stepped out. I'm gonna be out of the trade, of course, but it is what it is. It is trading. We anticipate what's happening. We're not reacting. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna pause the video and come back whenever I get stuck down or break even. Bye for now. Okay, just like that, I got stopped out, break even. So it is what it is. It's a break even day. All right? And I was gonna show you something like this. I can only be in one at a time, so bye for now.